completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 40, drilling and pinning the drop arms to the reversing shaft using taper pins. This job is not something I like doing. The time has finally come to fit these drop arms to the reversing shaft. It would be nice if Loctite 603 was sufficient, but unfortunately it isn't. The following video footage shows the details of how I do the job. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, it's just the way that I do it. I've clamped a piece of 18mm plywood in the machine vise on the drilling machine. This allows me to hold the component flat on the piece of plywood. The problem at the moment is I seem to have lost my small centre drills. This one's a bit too big, so I'm not going to go through the part too far. I need to make a deep enough impression to guide the main twist drill. I repeated the process on every one of the drop arms, and once I've finished doing this job, I'll drill them all the way through with a very small twist drill. Did I mark the positions where the holes are going to be? No, I'm just doing it by eye. At this stage of the operation, I enlisted the help of a small piece of mahogany, because I had some offset in the drop arm that connects to the screw reverser. Later on, I changed my mind and didn't bother with this, so really I could have done this entire job flat on the piece of plywood. Or I could have turned the part over and drilled from behind, but then that would be a problem. This is a very small twist drill bit, it's only measuring 5 64ths of an inch. Had I have drilled the parts from behind, there's a good chance that the drill would have broken through in the wrong place, because it's very small, and very small twist drills can be prone to wandering about. Once I'd finished the drilling operation, all of the holes were more or less in the same position on each of the drop arms. Now comes the fun part, I'm using a taper reamer to make each of these drilled holes into a tapered hole. I've seen so many steam engines where the drop arms are loose on the reversing shaft over time. Normally this is due to people using things like roll pins, which are spring steel tubes with a slot along their length and I've never found these to be much use, they work loose over time. It's possible to use a parallel pin, but it would have to be a tight fit, or I suppose you could fit it with some Loctite, but no, tape pins are the best to use. Time now for some moderate ultraviolence. I'm resting the part on the end of a piece of copper tube, and tapping the taper pins into each of the drop arms in turn. And I'm tapping these pins fairly severely into the holes, because this part will never be dismantled. After hammering the taper pins into the tapered holes, I trimmed off the excess, first on the bandsaw. After I trimmed them on the bandsaw, as you see here, I used my one inch belt sander in the outer part of the workshop to remove all traces of the pins, well, almost all of the traces. I saved the special drop arm until last. I reamed the hole, fitted the taper pin, chopped it off and cleaned it up on the belt sander. In this clip, I'm refitting the reversing assembly to the standards. And when I engage the screw reverser with the die block, it works perfectly. Time now to make sure that the travel is sufficient to move the expansion links the required amount. Originally, when I was loosely putting this assembly together, it looked like I needed some offset on the screw reverser drop arm. And I really gambled in the end that I wouldn't need this, and I was right, it doesn't need any offset. You can clearly see that there's more than enough travel as far as the expansion link is concerned and the valve fork lines up with the eccentric rods at both ends. I heaved a bit of a sigh of relief at this point. I thought it was a good idea to clean up this special nut that I machined which fits on the end of the reverser rod. But now I need a spacer at each end of the actual screw reverser part. So this nut is a bit redundant. I'll put it in place for the time being. This is nowhere near the final assembly, but I thought at this stage it would be a good idea to move the eccentric sheaves into their approximate position. If you've been watching the series, then you will realise that I modified the fixing method of the eccentric sheaves to the crankshaft, because the very thin collar on the end wouldn't allow sufficient threads to tighten a grub screw at this point. By drilling a hole in the eccentric strap, I can use an Allen key to really clamp the eccentric sheaves to the crankshaft. In this clip I've loosely assembled the two rods that move the expansion link and now I'm temporarily fixing the eccentric sheaves in place at this end. I really am hoping that the travel is exactly the same at the low pressure end as it is at the high pressure end. 
So I'm really hoping that the valve rod is exactly in the center of the low pressure cylinder steam chest. And as you can see, it is. I will need to limit the travel of the expansion link at both ends, and this is a simple thing to do. I need to fit a washer at one end of the reversing screw, and a piece of tube at the other end. I won't do this just yet, I'll wait until the final assembly. To illustrate the fact that all four of the drop arms are perfectly aligned with each other, I'm using a ruler, and it's touching every one of them, which is a good thing. At this stage I'm very tempted to bolt it all together and start the valve setting procedure using compressed air, but no, it will just become an oily mess, so what I'm going to do is fit the cylinder cladding first. Also, I need to buy six of the taper type cylinder drain taps. And also, before assembling the engine, I need to drill the holes in the two operating arms that move the air pump and the water circulation pump. But that's in another episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.